Women engineers. Huh. The first female engineer that I ever worked with got me arrested. True story. I was working for the railways as a construction engineer. It was my first job after finishing university. One day, the boss called us to gather together. OK, you lot. Head office is sending out a uh, female undergraduate to get some work experience. Well, I'm expecting all of you to take her out and to show her the ropes, OK? She? Yes, she is a woman. Now, female engineers were very rare when I started my career. In fact, I think there was only one in my whole graduation cohort. All the other blokes were keen to show her around. <laughs> yeah, I'll show her my jobs. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> As a Christian, I thought it best not to get involved in all the bawdy talk and the innuendo. When the female engineer arrived, she was Asian, studious, modest, and very quiet. Soon, all the other men grew tired of her. Hey, Mike, for heaven's sake, take that girl out and show her your jobs. The other blokes have just left her sitting there. So I took her out, and I soon realised the challenges a woman has on a construction site. The first job I, I took her to, the men were maintaining the overhead wires. They were working on top of a flat-topped train. I was going to take her up to the top of the train when I realised that she was wearing a skirt. I decided that I'd go up first to protect her modesty. When we got up, she was very studious and she looked around at all the equipment and was asking me questions. Now, a lot of the equipment that we used, when I referred to them to order them to make sure they were there for the job, I used numbers because each piece of equipment had a number. But of course, the men out on the construction site had nicknames for all the pieces of equipment. Some of them were not very savoury. There was one which was called pardon my language, a cow's cunt. So, of course, when the lady was there and she was looking at all the equipment, she started to ask questions. She said, what's that? I said, oh, well, that's a dropper. That holds the, uh, con the contact wire to the catenary wire. What's that, she said. Oh, well, that's an eight-inch insulator. Oh, and what's that, she said. And she pointed to the cow's you-know-what. Suddenly, all the men... And all the work stopped on top of that train as they looked at me, wondering, what's Mike, the Christian guy? <laughs> what's he going to say now? I said, well, that's a cow's, um, that's a 364 slash <laughs> five. They all broke down in laughter. As we travelled to my next job, <laughs> I explained to her why all the men had laughed and why I had been particularly careful about my choice of words. The next job was to fix some sagging wires that were at the entrance to one of the tunnels at Central Station. Central Station in Sydney is the most busiest railway station in all of Australia. And because of that, it's hard to know where the trains are coming from, which direction, because it doesn't follow the usual practice. So I told her to stay close to me as we approached uh, the wires that I had to show her. As we got close, I saw a train coming, so I told her to stand back. The train unusually slowed down. Suddenly a door opened and out jumped a big, burly policeman who wrestled me to the ground. What are you doing, I said. We're engineers. Yeah, and I'm the King of England. Come with us. With my arm twisted behind my back, we were frog-marched to the station. It wasn't until we got there that they allowed me to show them my identity badge. Well, we have to be pretty vigilant. Central Station, especially near those tunnels, is a common place for suicides. If we'd just seen some blokes walking down there, we probably wouldn't have worried. But when we saw you and a woman, well, we thought it must be a suicide pact. We had to act. We both went back to the work depot that evening with torn and dirty clothes. You really don't want to be crash-tackled on the top of the stone ballast on a railway line. Hey, what happened to you lot? In hindsight, I don't think I should have told them that we'd been arrested. <laughs> hey Mike, we couldn't get Boo out of her, but you took her out, you sly devil, and you both get arrested. Ha ha ha, good on ya. 
Women make up about 23% of graduates today. But those first women engineers had to do a lot to change the culture. They were successful because they were smart and more than capable. And the profession and its culture is much improved due to their influence. (laughs) Did you like my story? Then like or subscribe or catch another one on my channel. God bless.